Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to be coloring the Hero Arts Nasturtium stamp set. I'm going to be doing some no line coloring. And I love this stamp set because you could easily make a whole set of cards with these and they would be really quick, really easy. I had yellow on my mind today, so I colored these in yellow, but the sky is the limit with the colors for these flowers, folks. I have a piece of Express It Blending card cut down to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. And I'm going to be stamping this in the Hero Arts Soft Granite Ink because I did want to do some no line coloring. You you could use any light colored ink you like. Even the ink on three fade out ink would be fabulous for this. I just grabbed the soft granite because that's what I had sitting out on my desk and it works perfectly for this. I'm going to be starting with the Copic in V12. I am going to use this for my darkest shade color. I'm adding that right down there in the center of that petal and bringing that out. I'm right up there on the tip of my marker, flicking that out. There are also some lines illustrated to the edge of these petals. So I'm adding some of that V12 in there pretty lightly, keeping those lines pretty thin. I'm going to bring in my Y38, go over the top of that V12, bring that out a little bit and then I'm going to finish this off with my Y35. I do have the full length version of this video over on Patreon where I go into more detail about my coloring today and an issue that I had with my markers and coloring this. You should definitely check that out. There are quite a few really good tips or really good things to know about uh, issues you could have with your Copic markers and the issues that I had when coloring in this card panel. I'm gonna just going to do the same thing on all of these petals as I had done on my first one. They're not very big folks so I can afford to go in on the entire flower with the V12, then go in with my Y38, and then finish it off with my Y35. Typically, you kind of want to be conscious about how much you work ahead with each color. You definitely don't want these colors to dry back too much before you bring in another color. That's going to make your blending a little bit more difficult. Now, I was already riding the struggle bus anyways because I was having an issue with one of my Copics, but... You don't want to make those kind of things even worse by coloring it too far ahead. However, like I said, these are small enough that I could do that and work through these pretty quickly. I'm going to do the same thing on those other two flowers that I'm doing on this one. The only flower that's going to be an exception here is that a bud that is, hasn't quite bloomed out yet. That one's going to be a little bit different. But overall, these flowers are pretty much illustrated the same thing. I am paying attention to where I'm going to add some of that shade and some of that shadow. So if I have a petal that is underneath another petal, I'm going to make sure that I add that shading right up against the edge of the one that is on top. So when I'm done coloring this in, it looks like I have some shade or some dimension and movement in these petals. I'm also going to be bringing in my colored pencils to add in a little bit more of that detail and that's fine, but I want to make sure that I'm laying my groundwork with my Copic markers to begin with. Now, as I said, this one is going to be a little bit different than the other than the first one because it is folded up onto itself. So I am making sure that I add some of that V12 right up underneath this bud where it's going to meet that stem, bring that out. There's also some gaps in between some of these petals. I added that V12 in there. I'm going to go right over the top of all of that V12 with that Y38 and bring that out a little bit. My blending is kind of suffering today and I was making good to ensure that I was concentrating on my blend. But again, I was having a problem with one of those Copics and I talked Talk about that more over on Patreon. So do be sure to go check that out, folks. After I was done with that Y38, I'm coming in with this Y35 and I'm going to make sure that I am covering all of this. I was actually going for a more delicate uh, yellow, a brighter yellow. The V12 and the Y35 or the Y38 is a really great way to get a nice desaturated orange when your Copics are working properly. Mine weren't, so this kind of ends up in a more muddy orange place than that more delicate yellow. The Y35 is darker than a Y21 that I would typically use. 
However, it's still a really great yellow. This is a really great yellow. You can still get a very delicate color out of this, but I'm going to ride the struggle bus today. That's fine. I'll fix it here shortly. I'm only going to show you these two because the rest of them are the same thing and I would just be repeating myself and there's no sense in doing that. So after I'm done coloring in my flowers, I'm going to start working on the greenery here. I actually pick up a G28 when I really wanted a G29. G28 is a tough blend with any marker, folks. G29 can be a little tricky by itself as well. However, it works better than a G28. I am bringing in this G28. I'm right up here at the tip of my marker because I'm going in these finer areas. There isn't a whole lot of room to color in here, folks. If you're worried about uh, making too fat of marks or too fat of lines with your colored pencil, or I'm sorry, with your marker, you could absolutely skip this darker marker in those finer areas, in those darker shadow areas on these stems and up underneath these flowers and just do that with your colored pencil. However, I am fine with it. I don't have a problem with it. I'm willing to risk it. But if you're not, skip the G28 on the stems just color them in with the G24 and then we'll talk about the colored pencil portion of it here shortly. I do want to make sure that I am adding that shadow in and that shade in these stems because they're twisty and turny and some of them are sitting further back in the image. Some of them are a little bit closer and I need that shade and that shadow in there to make them look like they actually have real life movement to them. So I am making sure that I add that shade and shadow in there. It doesn't matter if you do this with a Copic marker or a colored pencil, you just want to make sure that you'll do it, If that you're doing it. If you don't, it's actually going to look flat. And then you're going to have these flowers that look dimensional, leaves are going to look dimensional, but your, your vines or your stems, they're not going to look so dimensional and it will stand out like a sore thumb. So make sure that you're getting that in there. After I was done with that G28, I'm coming in with this G24 and I'm going to go right over the top of it. I absolutely do not expect a perfect blend on this, folks. There is going to be a definite difference between the G28 and the G24. I already know this about the G28, so I'm going to compensate for that later. There are some of these areas that I will go over them a second time with that G24 and kind of break down that G28 as much as I can, but I do have to be careful. I don't want to oversaturate it because they will start bleeding outside of those vines and it's going to be really hard to get rid of that and it'll be super noticeable if you can't get rid of it. I also noticed while I was coloring this in, I missed a few uh, shadow areas, some shading in there, so I am going to go back in and make sure that I have that done and then I'm going to call that good and I'm going to start working on those leaves. These leaves are kind of tricky, folks, because of that blend and they are a bigger surface than your stems or whatever the vines, I suppose, whatever you'd like to call them. They're going to be a lot more noticeable in the blending department. Now, there are some things that you can do that will help minimize that. I am not going to talk about them in this video. Again, that is something that you could go check out on the full length version over on my Patreon channel. There is uh, some tips and tricks there that will help you a ton if you have some really tough blending combinations. So again, I'm starting with that G28. I go into those darkest shadow areas and then I'm going to go right over the top of that with that G24. I will have to fix the blend on these when the time comes with my colored pencils. In the meantime, I'm going to start coloring in these flowers here. I'm starting with the Prismacolor and Parma Violet. I'm going in where I would have had that V12. I have a very sharp pencil and a super light hand. It does not take much to get to this Parma, Parma Violet down on this paper, and it's going to look purple until you bring in the mineral, mineral orange. Go right over the top of that Parma Violet with the mineral orange. Bring that out into that Y38. Now, I am writing the struggle bus a little bit, folks, because I did not get a good blend on these flowers to begin with. That's 
fine. I will just take some extra time and work at the edges of those blends. I'm also going to be bringing in the yellow ochre to go just barely at the edge of that mineral orange and out into where I would have had that Y35. I am still trying to preserve as much of that Y35 as possible. I'm not trying to recolor these. I'm just trying to add that detail and that definition and a little bit more color in to adjust for the uh, poor blending on these. I'm also going to just do the same thing on all of these flowers that I have done on that first one. They're different shapes, but it is the same principle. Again, I want that perma violet in with that V12, the mineral orange in over the top of the v, the perma violet and the Y38. Let's say this 10 times 10 times fast. This is the pink envelope tongue twister. That's what we're doing today and I don't know how to talk. All right, so Again, coming in with that mineral orange right over the top of the Parma Violet up into that Y38 and then I'll bring in that yellow ochre to finish that off and then I can call those good. Overall, these went together really quick, pretty fast, even with having to put in a little bit more elbow grease to get them to work. But I really, really enjoyed the stamp set. I would love to see these nasturtiums colored in other colors. I think that they would be so darling and I think that they would be tons of fun in a card set. I didn't go for any major realism today, folks. I really didn't care. I just wanted to color these in and I wanted to color them in this yellow. And that was about it for me. But you could have a blast with all sorts of different colors. For my leaves, I am using the indigo blue in my darkest shadow area, and I am not going into all of that G28 with that indigo blue like I typically would. I'm actually just going into the very, very darkest areas with a very sharp pencil, super light hand, and then I'm going to bring in this Prussian green, and I'm going to go in with the Prussian green over the top of the indigo blue, the G28, out into that G24 to get the that smoother transition and then I'm going to call that good. I still had my paints out from last week's project so I'm mixing together Distress Ink and Hickory Smoke and black soot with some clean clear water. I'm going to splatter this right across my card panel. I have a cheater mask covering that up because I did not want to get any of these on my flowers. You could, it would totally be fine and this makes for for great embellishment, but I decided that I wanted to keep those flowers nice and clean. I also add some Nuvo Aqua Shimmer to the highlights of these flowers as well as a Secure Clear Glaze Pen to the centers of my flowers. And then I am going to call that good. That is it, folks. We are done. We are good to go. I have more links down in the description below as well as over on my blog. I will have a Patreon linked down below so you can definitely go check that out. I hope you enjoyed my project today. If you did, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.